I'm actually really excited to hear the questions that you have because I, I didn't I didn't write them down, but they're similar to what you kind of were asking me. So first of all, sure. first of all, and this, I think you asked this to Kevin and Jojo. What's the most rewarding? What has been the most rewarding part of coaching your trial clients? Honestly, the fact that these are people I know and already like know and care about. Mm -hmm. And so like, they're not strangers that just came to me for help. They're people I already cared about a lot. And then being able to be a part of their growth and seeing yeah. them celebrate like those wins, celebrate some growth in their life. And then saying like, yeah, I, I know them and I'm able to be there for them in that way, like support yeah. them. That, that is, that really does, you know, make me feel, it just makes me feel good. It makes me feel like the value I give can actually help people. And like people I really, really know and care about, that's cool. So other people I'll meet as I coach, I'll get to know them. And I'm mm -hmm. sure I still have that feeling because I'll get to know people. But it's just nice to know that people I already have been in their life, I get to work with and yeah. see some growth with. So that's that's rewarding for me. Okay. And what was the most surprising thing for you? Because I know you were very like super excited when you got myself, Prashant, and Jennifer. So like what surprised you? Because Okay, actually, I feel like you, you might know the answer. I mean, I might know part of your answer, but yeah, what 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 surprised you the most for this? Like, what? How long was this? Six months? Four months? Four months. Four months. Four month yeah. program. Yeah. Hmm. I don't even know my answer yet. So, uh, um, I think what surprised me was how different people take the program. I guess, like how different people are. Hmm. For example, how one client can use the growth tracker like a thousand percent perfectly and just on their own. And like, I don't even need to check. I can close my eyes and know that they did it. Whereas yeah. other clients don't even like being on the computer in the first place. <laughs> Me. I'm not even talking about you per, per se. So it's just funny how like, you know, people are different and people mm -hmm. come from, like, they have different things going on in their lives. So like they, they have to really, really tailor the program to what they can really honestly achieve. Because everyone's like busy in their own way. I'm, I'm realizing that too. Everyone has their own stuff going on. So just saying, yeah, work out every day. Not everyone can do that because they have other things that are more important than that. Mm -hmm. Even though they want to, like, that's just an example of, you know, things get in the way. So I think, yeah, people's differences, individual differences, I have to learn how to understand that. Even though I, I know a person, I don't really know these things until I really dig deeper and know, okay, what challenges are in the way right now? things change over time too. over four months, things change. So it's like mm -hmm. knowing how to like address the, the challenges and the struggles with the person individually, and make sure the program is tailored for them, even as simple as like the tracking of it. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what surprised me. True. I didn't think about that. And what would you say is one thing like your big, maybe this is kind of the same ish question. But what's the biggest lesson you learned? Actually, no, your answer should be different to this, different for this. Probably right. Biggest lesson I learned. Biggest lesson you learned for you think that you can give to your clients and the biggest lesson for yourself. I think the biggest lesson for my clients, I'm a very common theme I'm noticing is like start slow and like find momentum instead of like starting with this big grand, like I want to do all this. Like I mm -hmm. have like three things for the mind, each for the mind, body, and soul, but not everyone can like hit all nine. Even for me, I couldn't hit all nine I put for myself. Mm -hmm. so I'd rather people build momentum and celebrate small wins every week rather than feel defeated for not doing all these big things that they said they wanted yeah. to do and I think that's a common theme for other people and for myself like that lesson is true for myself too like I gotta take it easy and like just figure out how to like yeah life changes different things change like my jobs are changing every single week and this push season so I have to adjust and change things so I'd rather, I'd rather celebrate and focus on like small momentum, but doing the being consistent with a few things rather than mm -hmm. being consistent with a lot at once, because yeah, I, that's, I don't know. That's just the biggest lesson yeah. is the momentum. I want to keep the momentum with myself and with others. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you mm -hmm. I remember you did, you did have a growth, track, growth tracker for yourself as well. For you, do you have any, like on your growth tracker, was it just for your personal life or was it? geared towards coaching it was like a little bit of both like I wanted to see how me as a client how I would coach myself and oh. it's not easy because like with everything else I have going on like 
I have to keep myself accountable with that. It's tough. It's almost like we all really do need a coach. We all do need someone telling us, hey, go do stuff. Like even I can't keep myself accountable with everything I want to do. It's tough. So yeah, like, yeah, I wanted to like, just see how, if I could use it for myself and it still requires just as much, um, as much work as anyone that's using it for themselves. It's the same thing. Mm, interesting. And what was the most challenging part? Of what? Of doing this. Or this whole program? Yeah. What was like in terms of into, leading up to now or? No, no, no. Um, Cause I think I can include the push season and everything. I think what's the most challenging part of coaching other like like the trial clients what was the most challenging part of that honestly i think just making the time to like have face to face with them because Mm -hmm. everyone's schedules everyone is so busy that's not like everyone has always has something going on like whether like they want to think it or not there's always things happening so if we don't plan out a certain time to talk we just miss a call it just goes away so it's like i really have to make an effort on my side to make sure like hey Give me a few dates. You're free. Stop. It. Even if it's a 15, 30 minute call, that's fine. Let's just make the time to stop in and check in. As you're saying, that accountability sometimes means a lot to certain people. Mm-hmm. So that's like a challenge. That was a challenge is making the time. It's not going to be, hey, every Monday at six o'clock, we're going to meet. No, because things come up. Things change for me, for them. Mm-hmm. It's two It's two ways. So we got to be yeah. flexible on both sides, but still be committed to show up. Yeah, true. I like that. Um. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Um, I have another question for you. I'm just gonna, this might be my last one. So in terms of filling your might cup, be. maybe. <laughs> yes. It's 6.30. No, it's 6.30. You have to go. Because technically we're supposed to start at 5.30. You want it to be an hour long. Ask me a okay. question. Okay. So in terms of filling your cup. So I guess this is my turn to a two-part question. Because I know how much you enjoy it. Like, I know you're passionate about it. Like, you feel really happy helping like this is something that like, you're stuck like, 100% about so do you feel like coaching is something that fills your cup or if it's not then how have you been or were you filling your cup while you were coaching us um does coaching fill my cup it does but it 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 kind of like feels like the faucet if that makes sense <laughs> like the cup is like me like personally related like like for example for me like sleeping fills my cup because like I wake up Mm -hmm. and I literally have energy or like working out because I my body literally feels stronger and better but having a conversation and seeing you know some insight you have some insight and you're doing well makes me feel good but like that's a little bit that's just one off from me actually taking care of my like my, my mental health my physical health like you know like it's just one off. So it's like, it fills the faucet. So it gives yeah. me the energy to go and do the things like it, it's like one beside it. So it really, really does give me that fulfillment. But I think it's just a little bit from filling my own cup. I think when you fill your own cup, it should be almost very selfish. It should be very mm-hmm. self-centered in, in, in the best way possible. You know what I mean? Does that yeah, make no, sense? I get that. I get that. Cause it's like, yeah, when you're so with coaching, like even though it's making you feel happy to give to others and like help others, at the same time for you it just like filling your cup is very inward so it's, it's like very geared towards yourself it's like if I spent all my day just coaching clients and I spent like 10 hours a day just on calls sure yeah. I'd feel great but I'd have no energy I would be exhausted drained it's like I have yeah. to fill my cup because at the end of the day coaching is a lot of pouring into other people's cups mm-hmm. so it's kind of like the faucet it's like I need to be fueled up first so if I'm yeah so it's like it's you know what I mean mm-hmm. that, that, that kind of analogy so moving forward, let's say that you have like three more or four more like official, like real clients. And then you are, let's say not another push season comes, but like things get really hard for you too. What would be like, what's the first thing that you would work on besides sleep? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, what do you think would be like your, I guess, action plan or like incoming, like yeah. encountering those kind of situations again? The whole thing I'm working on right now is like freeing up time. Cause like time is like the most important resource I have. So if I have five hours in the day, it's like, if I had five hours and I actually just did nothing that that's crazy to think about, like, that's really having five hours, but like, I'll fill five hours with things to do. So I, mm-hmm. I actually don't have time, 
So it's like, I need to create more time. That's what I'm working on is creating more time. Mm -hmm. So when I have the time, I can be like, hmm, do I want to coach? Like, can I make time for clients? Should I go do my other business? Should I just go work out? It's like, I don't know. I can do, I have the free time. I can just decide. I can just wing it today. I can just see how I feel in the day. That's mm -hmm. real time. So like, that's one thing that would help me is when I have a push season, I have time to just do things my own way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think sometimes even like I forget, like there's one aspect that there's one view of you, which is just like, he just loves coaching. Like this is 100%. This is his like passion at the same time. You just kind of forget like the person that's coaching is like, it's not easy for them because while they're trying to like help people, like figure other people's lives out there, like you still have so many issues going on in the background for yourself that you need to figure out on your own. Mm -hmm. So just like, yeah like it, because it's personal things like directly affecting you um so yeah that's it's, it's tough 